in this video, we're going to talk about the call center call flow that needs to be followed by a call center agent whenever he or she is taking in phone calls. Hi guys, welcome back again to the channel. This is G and you're watching Call Center 101 where I share call center tricks and tips that can help you with your call center journey. If you are new to the channel, please consider to click the like and share this video to anyone that can benefit from it. And also please hit the subscribe button and also the notification bell so you always be notified whenever I'm uploading new videos in this channel. And without further ado, let's get into the video. So let's define first what is call flow. Call flow is actually a conversational flow of the call between you and the customer over the phone. The conversation can be different from each other because it depends on the concern of the customer. For example, customer is calling about a refund, so there will be a specific re uh, refund call flow for that. If the customer is calling about order, taking orders, or asking about their order, uh, there will be a specific call flow for, for that concern. So it is important for a contact center or an account to have a, a call flow because it promotes uh, efficiency and also promotes quick resolution for the concern of your customers. And call flow has its parts. So we have the opening spiel, we have the asking questions to your customers, understanding what's their concern, also checking your tools so that you can provide proper resolution for your customer. Also, we have the, uh, the time where you deliver the resolution to your customer. Also, how you are going to close your call, which is, you know, the um, finishing the call and the closing spiel. And in this video, we're going to be focusing on the opening spiel. So we're going to talk about what is opening spiel, um, how do you do the opening spiel over the phone, and also what are the things that you have to remember for you to open your call. So as a customer service representative, we all know that first impressions are vitally important, but not all of us are aware that uh, we only have little time for us to make a great one. So actually, according to a psychological research, we actually form opinions in less than a minute. That's why it is very important for us to open our call the right way. So whenever you open your call, you have to remember these things. Number one, you have to set a professional tone over the phone. You can open the call with an inviting manner because this will set the mood for the rest of the conversation with your customer. We also have to remember that there are some accounts that has their own opening spiel, meaning uh, it is a mandatory spiel that you have to say whenever you open your call. That's why I strongly suggest you memorize it by heart so that you will not have a hard time whenever you say that over the phone every time. There are also some accounts that doesn't have their own opening spiel. That means the account is allowing you to uh, create your own opening spiel. You can personalize it if you want. You can add some words to it or some inv more inviting words whenever you open your call. But we have to remember that we are still talking to our customers. That means we still need to be professional in what words or what phrases will we use when we open our calls. So the next is your tone of voice. Well, we already mentioned this from the previous videos that I created, that using the proper tone of voice is very important whenever you are taking in phone calls. When a customer identify your tone of voice, they are also identifying your personality. They will actually start to form an image of you as a person or the company that you're working with based on the tone that you are presenting over the phone. And also by doing this, customers will feel like they're getting to know the brand or the company that you're working with. It will also bring trust and familiarity to them. So I created some opening spiels that you can definitely use whenever you're taking in phone calls. Hi, thank you for calling ABC Company. My name is Alex. How can I brighten up your day? Thank you for calling ABC Company. My name is Alex and I come to save the day. How can I assist? 
Thank you for calling ABC Company. My name is Alex from the land of beautiful people and glorious sunshine. How can I help you? Welcome to ABC Company. This is Alex and I am ready to assist. How can I help? Thank you for calling ABC Company. I may not be handsome, but I can be awesome. Hi, this is Alex. How can I help you today? Hi there. It's an awesome day today here at ABC Company. My name is Alex. How can I help you? So the next is match the pace of your customer. Pace is like the speed when you talk to your customer. So you don't want to speak faster or you don't want to speak slower. You want to just match the pace that your customer is using so that both of you can understand each other. And finally, make sure that we maintain all the steps that we just discussed. Remember that we don't just set the proper tone or professional tone at the beginning of the call. We have to do that throughout the call. Also, make sure to be enthusiastic whenever you are talking to them over the phone. You can actually make your customer to be more comfortable by having a pleasant tone over the phone. And if you can explain their concern with confidence, you can gain trust that you can give them resolution. So as what was mentioned on the previous video that I created related to probing, probing is actually asking a series of effective questions to your customer. It's more unlike you are exploring more authority about their concern. Also, I want to remind you guys that there is no call that you will not probe. You always have to probe because you want to cover not only the stated needs of your customer, but also you want to cover the unstated needs of your customer. We're going to cover more of that later. So for example, you receive a phone call and of course you were able to open the call. You said your opening spiel, you were confident and the customer already provided their concern. So what are the questions that you will be asking to your customer and how are you going to ask those questions? Well, if you were able to watch the previous video that I created related to probing, I mentioned there about the WH question, the what, when, where, how, why, and who. So, for example, the concern of your customer is making a payment. So you can ask the customer, how are you going to process the payment for today? Or you can ask, what's the funding method that we are going to use to process the payment? You can also ask, where did you process the payment? Was it online or using the application? So that's actually just one way of asking questions to your customer. Of course, you don't want to just uh, put yourself in the WH question box, right? You also want to like formulate your own question depending on the concern of the customer. For example, the concern of your customer is order or processing an order or asking a status of the order. So you can ask the customer, where was the order processed? Was it online? Was it using the application? Or uh, did you receive a notification already? You know, so those type of questions or way of asking questions to the customer can definitely help you to go deep dive to the concern of your customer so that you can learn more about what's going on and you can uh, provide specific resolution to them. So the next is focusing on listening to your customers. So of course, you want to make sure that you're attentively listening to them so that you would know what's the question that you can ask to them so that you can move to the resolution that you can give, right? There are actually some times that when you, even though that you're, you're listening attentively to your customer, it's like you are not understanding them because your customer is eating their own words. So if that happens, what you want to do is to just listen to the keywords that customer is saying so that you can use those keywords to formulate your own question. For example, you heard customer is saying payment, processing, or whatnot. So you can say, just to make sure I got your concern perfectly, are you calling about making a payment today? So, you know, that kind of way of clarifying things to your customer will definitely help you. 
The next is your AER. Again, AER stands for Acknowledge, Empathy, and Reassurance. So, of course, you want to acknowledge the concern of your customers. So, your customer would feel that you are on the same page, that you understood their concern. You also want to empathize. So, you are not just covering the concern of your customer. You're also covering the emotional part of it. And lastly, your, res um, your reassurance. That means you want to make your customer feel that they can get resolution out of your conversation. So AER is definitely important to be part of your call. So make sure that you're not forgetting it. Okay, so for us to practice your probing skills, let's do an activity. Okay, so the activity goes like this. I will be giving you a call scenario. And for each scenario that I'll be giving, you have to formulate your own probing questions. So you will have five seconds for you to formulate your own probing question with that given scenario. And if you need more time, you can pause this video, okay? Hey, I'm trying to make a payment, but it's not going through. Can you help me with that? And time is up. So what if the customer is calling about making payment, but it's not going through? So what would be your probing question? Okay, well, basically, if the customer is calling about making a payment, but it's not going through, you can ask the customer, how was the payment done? How did you process the payment? Did you try to go to the store to process the payment? Or did you go online? Or... Did you get an error message when you tried to process the payment? What was the error message? Those kinds of questions, definitely you can ask it to the customer so that you would know what would be your next step to assist your customer better. Hey, um, I'm calling about my order. It's still not delivered. I don't know what's the status of my order. Can you help me with that? Time's up. Okay, so... The customer is calling about their order, the status of the order. So what would be your probing questions with that kind of scenario? Okay, well, basically, if customer is calling about the status of their order, you can ask the customer, okay, where did you process the order? Was it online? Did you go to the store? Or was it using the application? Or you can ask, uh, did you get any notification coming from us related to your order? Or you can ask the customer, do you happen to have the tracking number of your order so, uh, so I can try to search it for you? I can't make or receive phone calls. Can you help me with this? Okay, well, the customer is calling about their service. It's not working. They cannot make or receive phone calls. So what would be your probing questions with that kind of scenario? Okay, well, if the customer is calling about their service and it's not working, um, they cannot make or receive phone calls, you can ask the customer, Sir or ma'am, do you happen to have any signal in your phone right now, like in the bar signal bars of your phone can you see if there is a signal or you can ask the customer is this the first time that this happened you can also ask the customer did you get any error message when you're trying to make a phone call last scenario hey i'm trying to like access my internet but it's not working right now can you help me with that And time's up. Okay, well, what about this situ situation that customer is contacting us about their internet that is not working? What would be your probing question? Okay, well, if the customer is contacting us about their internet that is not working, you can definitely ask the customer, Sir or ma'am, is this the first time that this happened to you? Or... Uh, are you getting any error message when you're trying to access the internet? Or you can definitely ask the customer, Sir, can you try to access the internet right now, like access Google or YouTube? Let's see if there is an error that, will ha uh, that you will receive when you try to access the internet. 
And we're done with the activity. I hope that the activity helped you to formulate your own probing question. And I hope that this also helped you to improve your probing skills when you're already taking in phone calls. Now, let's move forward to the stated and unstated needs of your customers. So, for example, um, we have a customer that wants to make a payment. So, what would be the stated and unstated needs of your customer? Let's go ahead and find out. Okay, so the concern of the customer is making a payment. And I can tell you now that making a payment is one of the easiest call driver in the call center industry. So what would be your question to your customer so that you would be able to determine what is the uh, stated needs and the unstated needs? Basically, with that concern of your customer, they want to make a payment. The stated needs there is making a payment. Basically, you can assist the customer to make a payment. That's the stated needs. But what is the unstated needs of your customer? The unstated needs, you can cover that by asking questions to your customer. You can ask the customer a question like, Sir or ma'am, did you try to process the payment online or using our website? Because it's actually way easier to do it there. Uh, it's easier, faster, and safer. So did you try to do that there before? So customer will say, yeah, I tried to process the payment using your website, but I'm getting an error. I'm not sure how to resolve it. That's why I called you. So that, that situation that was just mentioned by your customer is the unstated needs. So basically, we were able to cover the stated and unstated needs of the customer. In that scenario, the concern of the customer was making a payment. The stated needs there is the making a payment. The unstated need of the customer is they are trying to make the payment online. They try to process it there, but they are getting errors. So once you were able to, to determine what is the unstated needs of the customer, you can assess the customer with the stated needs first and then resolve the unstated needs as well. If you will be able to do that, you'll be able to prevent customers from calling us back with the same scenario. And there you have it. Well, basically, we were able to cover the second part of the call flow, which is probing. Now we know that probing is asking a series of effective questions so that you can uncover the stated and unstated needs of your customer. Also, we talked about listening. It is vital for you to listen carefully to the concern of the customer so you would know what would be the right question that you can ask and you would know what would be the exact resolution that you can provide to your customer. Also, we had an activity earlier for practicing your probing skills, so I hope that that helped. And we also knew about the different ways of asking questions to your customers. So on the previous videos of our follow the call flow segment, we talked about what is opening spiel and how to do that over the phone. Also, we talked about what is probing and covered what is the stated and unstated needs so that you can provide correct and complete information to your customer. But this time, we are going to focus on the tools that you might be using once you're already taking in phone calls. We actually need to be familiarized on using those tools because it is where we are getting the answers and the resolutions that we are giving to our customers. So what are those tools and what are the uses of those tools? That's what we are going to talk about today. The first on the list is the knowledge base. Knowledge base can have a different name depending on the account that you're working with. And it is easy for us to navigate it because it has the processes, the instructions, and all of the answers about the concern of your customer. Also, we have to be aware that it updates from time to time. That's why whenever you're taking in phone calls, you always have to check your answers from the knowledge base that you have with your account. Also, it will make your job easier because you don't have to memorize all of the instructions, all of the processes that you have to provide to your customers because it's already stored in one tool. What you just have to do is to read and understand the documents inside of your knowledge base. 
The next tool is the binning or account system. This tool can have all of the information about your customer, like their phone number, their email address, their address, their financial information. And it can be overwhelming to navigate at first because it has a lot of buttons or hyperlinks inside. But think of it like Facebook when it was introduced to us. Most of us are not familiar on how to navigate it, right? So what we did was we tried to log into it almost every day. We played with it. We click the buttons inside and see what will happen. So billing or account system works like that. What we just want to do is be familiarized on where the buttons are located and what's the use of it so that we can be fluent on how to navigate it once we're already taking in phone calls. And just a note, of course, we always have to be careful whenever we are accessing the account of the customer because whatever changes that you will do on the customer's account might affect them financially or might affect their account in general. That's why you have to always be careful whenever you are changing something, whenever you are uh, doing something inside of their account. If it's possible for you to seek assistance from your supervisors or from your manager before changing anything, that will be better. The next is the troubleshooting tool. Like the other tools that we already talked about, this troubleshooting tool can have a different name depending on the account that you will be under. It also has a lot of buttons and hyperlinks inside, specifically on how you can assist the customers depending on their concern about their device or their services. This tool can make your job easier as well, especially if you are not a tech savvy person because it has all of the step-by-step -step instructions, the walkthroughs that you need to know for you to assist your customers, especially with their service or their devices. The next is the sales tool. This tool can provide you all of the products and the services that your account is offering to its customers. This will also give you the description of all of those products and services so that you don't have to memorize them. What you want to do is just to read and understand each of those products that you want to offer to your customer so that you can be confident whenever you're delivering it over the phone. The next tool is the soft phone and the hard phone. So what's the difference between the two? Let's start first with soft phone. Soft phone is actually a software that is usually installed already in your computer. It works like a telephone. It has the interface of a telephone. It has the mute button, the transfer button, and we use it to make or receive phone calls. The hard phone, on the other hand, looks like this. This is actually a Navaya. It's a hardware that we use to make or receive phone calls. Basically, it's a telephone that we use also to dial numbers to receive phone calls coming from the customers. And just a tip, guys, whenever you're using your knowledge base, inside of your knowledge base, there will be a lot of words, a lot of terms that can be overwhelming whenever you're assisting your customer over the phone already. And for it to be easier, you can actually use the control F. It will make you find the keyword that you need to assist your customer faster because it will filter the words inside of the documents of the knowledge base. The next tip is how to maximize the spaces in your monitor. So actually in call centers, you are lucky if the company that you're working with provided you with two monitors to take phone calls. But most of the time, they're only providing one monitor each for each agent. Now, uh, as we talked about earlier, there are a lot of tools that you will be using whenever you're taking in phone calls, right? So how are you going to maximize the space of your monitor? What you want to do is to minimize those tools and place it on the sides of your monitor like this, for example. So your knowledge base, you can place it here. And the billing system or the account system, you can place it over here. And the soft phone, since it's important for you to see if you receive a phone call already, you can place it over here. My last tip is boost your multitasking skills. This can be challenging since we have different limits in performing our tasks at the given time. What I suggest is just learn how to concentrate and avoid those distractions whenever you're assisting your customer. It is more important that you understand your customer, so make sure you focus and try to navigate your tools while listening. And remember, 
Multitasking cannot be learned overnight, but you can practice doing it every call. Delivering the resolution is actually the part where you answer the question of your customers. But we always have to remember that it's not always like answering the inquiries of your customer. It can also be in the form of like educating your customer about the matter, or you can offer something to the customers like your products or the services that you have with your company. So I created a list that can help you to position yourself on how to deliver your resolution to your customers. The first on the list is gather all the necessary information first before we deliver our resolution to your customer. It is actually important for us to collect those details first, those processes, the proper expectation that you should say to your customer so that you can provide correct and complete information to them. But how are we going to do that? First things first, of course, you make sure that you're asking the right question to your customer, your probing skills. Make sure as well that you're checking your tools. Maybe there are some notes or important notes that you have to check on. Maybe the customer was already been assisted before. You know, those proper information, collect those details first so that you will be completely equipped when you are already delivering your resolution to them. The second on the list is gather your thoughts and construct your words or your sentences. Basically, after you collect all of those necessary information about the concern of your customer, after you probe the right question, checking the notes or your tools that is necessary for that concern, you have to make sure that you're composing yourself. You construct your sentences so that when you deliver your words to your customer, you will not stutter. You will also sound more knowledgeable because you are well prepared. The next on the list is seek assistance when needed. Well, there will be some calls that you are not yet familiar with or you were not able to assist those type of customers yet. That's why you might not be familiar yet on how to give them assistance or to give them resolution. So of course, the first thing that you have to do is to check your tools, check your knowledge base, your account system or your billing system so that you can see some answers there. But after trying, after searching for answers, you weren't still able to get the answer that you need to give to your customer. If that's the case, you have to ask assistance from your supervisor or your support or your manager so that you are sure that you are giving complete and correct information to your customer. It is normal for us to seek assistance, guys, especially if we don't know really what's going on or how to give resolution to your customer. So don't be afraid to ask questions, guys. The next on the list is be confident. You should be confident whenever you're delivering your answers to your customers. Of course, before you deliver your answers, you were able to do your research already, you check the notes, you ask the right questions to your customers already, and by then, you should be confident when you are already saying all of those details to your customers. Remember that your customer thinks that you are an expert, so you should sound like one. Also, you have to maintain your tone of voice and your pace as well. The next is don't just look for one resolution. You have to look for several options that you can provide to the concern of your customer. For example, your customer declined the first option that you provided. So you already have your second option and your third option ready to offer to your customer. In that way, you will be more efficient in giving resolutions. And also your customer will think that you are an expert, that you are on top of the concern that they are providing. The next on the list is provide the benefits of the resolution that you're giving to your customer. You always have to ask yourself, the resolution that you're giving, is that going to answer their question? Is that going to uh, resolve their concern? Is that going to benefit them in the near future? You have to ask those questions to yourself. You have to make sure that you are making the situation of the customer better. You are the expert, so make sure that you are providing them the best resolution and you're giving them the benefits that they can get out of the resolution that you're providing to them. The last but definitely not the least on our list is don't be afraid. There will be some customers that will accept the resolution that you will give them, but 
there will definitely be some other customers that will not accept, that will decline whatever resolution that you will give them. And that is okay. As long as that you are providing the right resolution, that you are providing correct and complete information to your customer, that's already enough. You can always seek assistance to your supervisor because it can be that your supervisor or your manager has a different resolution that they can offer to the customer, right? And also, we have to remember that your customer will not be able to see you. They will just hear you, your tone of voice and others, right? So don't be afraid. They will not be able to touch you or hurt you. So just be confident whenever you're delivering your resolution to your customer. And just a tip, guys. Always remember how to kiss. KISS stands for keep it short and simple. So whenever you're giving resolution to your customer, make sure that it's just short and simple, but informative at the same time. Okay? going to cover the last part of our call flow, which is the closing spiel. So how are you going to do your closing spiel? Uh, what are the things that you have to remember whenever you're closing your call? And that's what we are going to talk about today. First up, you have to know your goal. Your goal as a customer service representative is to leave a good impression on your customer. Your closing spiel should include a quick wrap up of the conversation and also a, uh, an expression of gratitude for your customer's time. And I created a list about that that you can follow. The first on the list is give a quick recap about the things that you did for your customer. You can actually restate the concern of your customer and then tell them again what was the resolution you provided. This is just to make sure you're gaining a complete agreement coming from the customer and making sure as well that the customer understood what was the discussion during the call. For example, your customer is calling about refund. So you can say to the customer, sir, just to give you a recap, so you called in about your refund. I was able to create a refund ticket for you and it's going to take this time frame for you to be able to get your refund back okay so that's how you can say your recap statement to your customer the next on the list is set proper expectation it is important for us to inform the customer what to expect after your conversation with them for example the same scenario as earlier your customer called in about the refund so what are the information that you have to inform them before the call ends? Are they going to receive a call back coming from you? What is the time frame that they should be expecting the refund? Are they going to receive an email? So those information, you have to inform those to the customer so that they would know what to expect after your conversation. And aside from that, it will prevent customers from calling back with the same concern. The next on the list is maintain your tone of voice and your pace. Of course, you don't want to sound like you're rushing the call, right? Remember your goal. Your goal is to leave a good impression to your customer. So make sure that you are still polite. Um, your tone of voice is still the same as what you used during the call. And um, your pace is not sounding like you're rushing the customer. So just keep uh, keep on using the same tone of voice, maintain those until the end of the call. The next is give the benefits of using the self-service option. There are actually some processes or instructions that your customers can do using the website of your account, or maybe they can go to the store, um, go to a kiosk machines there, you know, uh, to do it for themselves instead of like contacting uh, customer service over the phone. That's actually beneficial for the customer because it will save them time. Um, also, it's faster, easier, and safer. So make sure that we are empowering our customer by using the self-service options because those can definitely make their uh, life easier and it will save them more time. The next is end on a high note by asking the customer, is there anything else that I can help you today? You should always ask that question before you end the call because it will, uh, it will drive FCR. FCR stands for first call resolution. That means when you receive your call, you will be resolving all of the concerns that customer may have on that call. You will not allow the customer to call back with the same concern or maybe you were not able to cover every concerns that they have on that call. So make sure you will not forget, ask the customer. 
Is there anything else that I can help you today? The next on the list is place proper notes on the customer's account. It is important for us to document every important detail that happened during the call. For example, the name of the customer, the phone number, if the call was authenticated, what was the concern of the customer, and also the resolution that you provided. You also have to place there if the customer agreed to the resolution that you offered. It is going to serve as our record of interaction with the customer. So that's the reason why it's very important. So make sure you don't forget to place proper documentations within the call. And the last but definitely not the least on our list is your closing spiel. Well, there are some accounts that will ask you to use their closing spiel and say it verbatim. There are also some accounts that will allow you to personalize it a bit. But whatever it is, make sure that you are sounding polite still, you are still sounding friendly, and don't forget your goal. Your goal is to leave a long-lasting good impression to your customer during the call. And don't forget to thank your customer. Make sure you let them feel that they are valued and you appreciated that they called. And just a tip, guys, whenever you're delivering your closing spiel, you can actually add, like, um, for example, it's almost weekend. You can say to the customer, happy weekend, or it's the holiday season. You can say to the customer, happy holidays, but make sure you are avoiding saying Merry Christmas or God bless you because we don't know the, the religion of the person that you're talking to. So make sure that we're kind of sensitive in that matter. So it's better if you're just going to greet them happy holidays or happy weekend if it's necessary. And that's the end of our follow the call flow segment. Thank you so much guys for watching all the videos. Of course, if you have some comments, questions, or maybe some contents that you want me to create in the channel, just let me know in the comment section below. Also, if you're new to the channel, go ahead and click that subscribe button now and click that notification bell so you'll always be notified whenever I'm uploading new videos in this channel. Again, my name is Chi. Thank you so much for watching. See you guys next time and please stay safe.